Welcome back to episode uh, 13 of the Working DJ Podcast. I am DJ SMS. I got DJ Demo with me today. Uh, DJ Tism is running late. He'll be here shortly. Uh, today we are, we have two special guests. Um, you guys can hear both of these guys on LA radio. One is a DJ at Mega. Um, one of the biggest, I think, DJs next to the other guy in the, in the, in the room. Uh, DJ Irony is in the, yeah, yeah, yeah. um, also we got DJ Santa Rosa. You guys can hear this guy on Cali 93.9, Pitbull Globalization, DJ City Edits, Galore. You guys know him. That's DJ Santa Rosa. Um, today we're discussing the Latin scene. Um, the last couple, I want to say the last two or three years, we've had some good um, musicians and personalities come onto the scene. Um, and we just want to talk, man, just about the Latin scene in LA um, and other markets you guys played, the Latin scene as a whole. Some of you, have any of you played Miami before or anything like that? Like, we want to discuss and know more about it and just where your standpoint is at the current. Um, the current situation of the Latin scene. So let's go, let's start off with irony, man. Um, where do you, where do you see the Latin scene at right now? Um, do you see it as a, as it, as it's, as it's rising and getting right next up there with hip hop? Um, is it surpassed hip hop? Where do you think uh, the Latin scene is right now? In regards to surpassing hip hop, it has in, in Latin America and Spanish speaking countries. Um, obviously, American, you know, we speak English, so the dominance is going to be an Anglo, quote unquote, English music. So um, I don't think it's going to go anywhere. I think it's already plateaued. It's already reached its peak and it's not going to dip any more than it has back 10 years ago, 15 years ago when it had that dip. Hopefully, I answered the question. Yeah, no, you hit it right out of, <laughs> you hit it right out of money. Um, is there any, let's get to you, uh, same question to you, Santa Rosa, let's go with you. Like, where do you think it is? Um, I think it's still going up, um, especially with, like, all these artists, like, like, mentioned, uh, like, Irony mentioned, like, Anglo-English speaking artists, like, you know, that, that uh, Dua Lipa with uh, J Baba and Bad Bunny, global, you know, record, and it's both literally English and Spanish, like, both artists, um, J Baba and Bunny sing in Spanish. And she does the chorus and her, ver like, you know, her stuff in English. So it's definitely like, you know, like, like it's, I think it's still growing and it's like going, it might suppress it, you know? Who do you guys think is probably one of the biggest artists in, in, in Latin right now? Bunny. Oh, definitely Bunny. Yeah. Bunny? For sure. Okay. Yeah. So for me, I call it like a three headed bull. Like, uh, I think it's Bunny, Ozuna, and either it's a toss up between Balvin and Maluma. Um, but I think that's like the three-headed monster of, of, of Latin, especially like reggaeton right now in Latin culture. That's like the, th the three-headed monster. Um, I, I grew up in the era of gasolina, racata, and, and you know, little, uh, all that, yo voy, yo voy, all that stuff. So um, from, from then to now, what has changed and what do you think has made Latin either on the rise or so prominent? All right, well, I'll, I'll speak on my behalf. Um, I didn't like it back then. I, I liked very little of it. Um, the, the thing that changed for me was the, the quality of music and, and uh, the perspective that I could actually, well, the, the topics that they were talking about and actually them singing clearly the, where I can understand them compared to before where it was just a little bit too noisy for me and, and not harmonically in tune. For my ear or for the anglo I, ear i need doesn't speak spanish that's why <laughs> <laughs> no but you're right though and, and especially on the on the musical side like the production definitely changed big time i remember the the sound before it actually felt repetitive and now it doesn't sound repetitive like it's still the same dembo like beat the same you know snares and kicks but now they flipped it in a way that it's like it's not it doesn't sound repetitive like They'll, they'll flip it with some kind of like little bit of like hip hop trap sound, like the bass lines is different, like the har harmonics, the melodies. They're actually it's actually a, a, a sound to it. I mean, I'm gonna use like, 808. It's kind of like the like for example other other Latin genres like cumbias, like you know banda, all that. Like it goes like tun tun. It changes the chords back and forth, you know. And I think they implemented that way more on the reggaeton side right now. No, and of course it evolved, it evolved big time. And I and I honestly I agree with both of you. Um, 
especially now also with reggaeton dude they've been doing a lot of you know, sampling from hip-hop music as well from back in the oh, night heavy but, heavy you guys really think about it you know like the new one with daddy yankee no 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 you know it's, you know cisco you know what i mean yeah. so it's, i think it's still evolving and like it's like i already said there's a plateau there and it's not gonna go nowhere i think it's gonna even get better um but because of that dude that was smart of them start doing that stuff because now you're not only getting just the reggaeton people listen to reggaeton and all that you know latin trap or you're still getting the hip-hop hits to go into because of that melody you know what i mean of the sampling so it's it just it's just evolving, dude, and that's that's all they had to do. Because back then, once once they had their little sound, and they went, it fell off. Remember? Mm-hmm. But now they started coming back. Now, now they're now they're trying different things, and that's that's what's you know getting up there big time. Yeah, I think I think what Bunny is doing right now, it's um, it's kind of like what I saw that we seen Yandel Don Omar did back in the day when when everything was the same reggaeton BPM. It changed to they they released like sexy movimiento that they added like kind of like electronic sounds. Don Omar released, uh, what was that one song? Uh, Salió el Sol. That was yeah. more up tempo dancehall. And that kind of like kept it alive again, you know, like give it a different vibe. That's what Bad Bunny's doing right now with like the new album. A lot of people like it's gotten some bad feedback because people were expecting that like raw fucking, oh. you know, Arreo, exactly. Yeah. But it's not that. It's like a different vibe. It doesn't mean it's not good. It's just a different vibe. Like that Rock in Espanol track, it's like. Oh, it's dope. It's dope. amazing. Really dope. Yeah. yeah. And right now, with 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 the the situation of what's going on in the world with the pandemic, the album I feel was a great album to drop right now because it's not so it's not so ratchet, it's not so turn up. It's very musically inclined, which is dope. I think it was the right time to drop it because at the end of the day, Bunny makes great anthems and great and great club hits. We all can sit here and say as DJs, we're playing at least five to ten, if not more, Bunny tracks a night. So. For him to drop something different right now, I think was really perfect timing on his part. Um, also, going back to what you said, growing up listening to Gasolina and all those early reggaeton tracks, you were right. They were really hard on the ear, on the ear, but they were really also overproduced at the same time. Where it was, it was too many sounds, and it was just it was a lot. It was a lot at once. You know, it's like taking a strong shot of alcohol and then just being like, "This is too much at once." Like it was literally hard to swallow at some point and I think you guys hit it right on the nail when you say the way that they're they're pushing the the the, the envelope it's perfect and it's also to the the producers have stepped their game up in the last 20 years when it in revolves to um opening their mindset of reggaeton tracks I mean for example we have Scott Storch producing a track with Tyga and Azuna and then you know on the other end you got Will I Am producing reggaeton hits over here with uh with Balvin. So, I mean, and then you also have um, DJ Snake in the middle of all this. So, I mean, I think the evolution of production wise and producers have also set their game up. Um, yeah, the Black Eyed Peas, like, literally was, I see it as a Latin album, to be honest. Like, pretty much all the features or most of the features are with Latin artists. Yeah. Oh, the Black Eyed Peas? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What, um, who, who's the next, like, Regular big person in reggaeton that people should be looking out for. Um, is there an artist that's kind of like on a come up right now where it's like this is the next the guy or or you know this is the person to to look out for in your in your perspectives? I, I honestly don't even know. I know Jay Wheeler's getting pushed a lot heavy, um, but there's tons and tons of other artists. I, mean, I, I, I don't know. I know Mike Towers is already established, but I think he's still like underrated he's still he's mad he's fucking crazy he's dope he's one of my favorite yeah. artists right now and he's Raul Alejandro. yeah Raul Alejandro, another one but i think they both of them are still gonna go up way more like kind of like osuna levels you know Oof. oh yeah i can see that mm-hmm. mike towers honestly like wow like he's dope i'm a big fan of mike towers he had me i was a fan of him after he did the girl record um i was a fan of him and then i'm already a fan of ozuna like i play I, that's uh I don't listen to a lot of um, Spanish albums. I think the last the last two years I've listened to Bunny, um, like J Balvin, and then mostly Ozuna. I really love um, Ozuna's chord play and tone of how he rides the beat a little bit. It's really it's really in a good in a good spectrum. Um, let's 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 go to the club scene. Now I know each of you DJ throughout LA. I've been to I've been to Santa Rosa's gigs. I've been to gigs with Irony. You know, what What are some, like, what would you say before pandemic, before lockdown, 
what was like kind of like the 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 club to play at as a, a Latin DJ premise? Oh, you could you could never go wrong with the conga room. <laughs> that's a that, that's a great spot. Um, Hollows is another great one. I know that's in Anaheim. Uh, well, out here in the South Cal area, uh, even Salt Lake out there it was pretty fun when I went out there. The where'd scene you, out there. Where did you play at Salt, at Salt Lake at Marquee? Yeah, from uh, but I can't remember the name of the venue. But even then, they go wild. They go wild. And this is pandemic time. This, yeah, this is back in, this is like three months ago. Yeah, certain places don't, they, they apparently didn't shut down. I was in Texas like a month ago, and I was like, what pandemic? Like, you guys are crazy. <laughs> I was with my mask, like, nobody had a mask. I was like, wow, this is, this is different. I, I was literally a little scared that I was going to catch it out there. Luckily, really? like, I tested when I got back, and I was fine. But, but still, you know, it's like, they, in Texas, it's like literally a whole different world. He ended up catching something else, probably, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so. The club scene has been, I, I've noticed a lot of venues that didn't want as much like Latin music, like they were actually turning into like a Latin night or they were pushing to have more Spanish music, you know, and uh, other venues. I think one that was, uh, it's uh, Ember, no, not Ember, sorry, uh, Heat, the, which is- Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, the Rumba Room is Sevilla, actually- Sevilla. Sorry, Sevilla's in Long Beach. Because I remember, remember before it was very strict hip hop. Really? Yeah. Because I feel like when I played the Via the last couple of times, they always wanted me to play more upbeat, more Vegas style type of DJ sets. I mean, I played the hip hop stuff too, but then they're always like, "Hey, take it up to play more hip hop, um, uh, more like of the of the EDM remix type of stuff." So it's weird that you say Sevilla's is uh, it's one of them. Okay. Roomba Room is another great one out in Anaheim. Yeah. Yeah, that venue is definitely a nice little venue right there. I don't know. I don't know about little, but it's nice. It's it's <laughs> like rumor room is really good. I'm surprised it hasn't had a lot of like big nights because it's probably one of the nicest venues in SoCal. It had yeah, great like, nights. I get this cracking, but I feel like the location is a little bit like off. Like inside of, you know, Garden Walk. Because Garden Walk is a mall, but it's always empty. Like, I live in OC, and I know about that. Like, that's what we say. <laughs> but like, but even like that is like, it, it's cracking. Like, I remember it's always cracking. But it was it's still a little weird of, of the location of that place. I think it's still that taboo vibe to go to the OC, knowing, like, you've had good venues up in L.A., and that's kind of like your staple of, like, where all the Latinos go. So venturing out to like the OC, it's a little bit more of that. I don't know. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Like even me, like living in the OC, and like my friends go to LA, you know, from here to LA to go party and all that, you know? So yeah, So and whenever I ask friends that live in LA, they're like, oh, we don't want to go to go OC. Or we're like, well, they're like, they're going to stay in the OC, you know, like get a room out here. It's like, it's not that far. But I get it. Like I'm used to that drive. A lot of other people are not. Like, yeah. I've been doing that drive to L.A. for, you know, since I was doing radio, like, when I started radio, like, you know, over 15 years ago, 10, over 10 years ago. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> there was, Look who's talking, right? There's a lot, of, a lot of clubs blooming, like, with the Latin scene, right? So once pandemic hit, everything closes. So now when it opens up, you think it's going to go back to the same thing? Will it, get, will it grow more or I think it will be, like, less? I mean, how do that's going to work after the pandemic with the Latin scene? Uh, it's just staying the same for sure, minimum. Yeah. People are ready to go perrear, you know. I feel like I feel uh, like uh, I've been seeing on my feet, I've been seeing a lot of uh Latin clubs or just places I know that's predominantly Latin, like they're still open. Like I know uh Divine has been open. Um I know Malacon relocated, but I've been seeing fires from them still being open. Um I think I just saw Envy Lounge is now open, like I feel like it's um these are all Orange County venues by the way, but um I really don't I really don't think people have kind of stopped turning up. I just think the turn up has kind of changed in a way it's like I can't get up and dance on the yeah. dance floor, but I'm gonna sit here and turn up at my table and eat these food and eat the food and, and have a good time type of vibes. Um, well then you should come to my parties then. <laughs> oh, there it is. An invite invite. Invite only. <laughs> invite only. Damn. Invite only. Invite LA County. Only. Is it is it the type of old school uh, parties where it's like you gotta wait to an hour before the party starts to get the address? 
Nah, you get like, you get a couple of days before. Okay. You have to call a number and they'll they'll have a the party light. <laughs> <laughs> the party light. <line. laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy. Let's get into hey. the let's get into the radio now. You guys are 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 compas and primos outside of the radio life. Um, yeah. What is it like to be kind of like? on opposite ends of LA radio, because at the end of the day, you guys are friends outside of radio, but at the same time, your radios kind of compete with each other because you're basically the same, uh, same genre of music, same market. What, what is that like for you guys? Do you guys low key, like throw shots at each other, like through text messages? The battles, I mean, all the time, all the time. Actually, I was competing with it. <laughs> I was competing we are, with that's it. Because I was doing, I covered for that five o'clock mix. Ooh. Oh, you did? Ooh, baby. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, so yeah, the shake always goes back and forth when we see each other. Sometimes we just gotta keep it on the low. It's like it's like people think that we're actually talking smack on each other, but they don't know that you know we're we're good friends like that. So we'll we'll talk smack, but they think we actually don't like each other or something, you know? <laughs> of course. It's like a match from uh, Anchorman, right? <laughs> Everybody <laughs> beats. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's our homies and shit. But it's business, is business. You know what I mean? Right, right. I'll go back to it, whatever. It's all good. I mean, shit. That, it, it's fun. That, that's a fun part about it. When you're in radio and you got good homies, that, that's just a fun part about it. It's competitive. Yeah, good it's com- kind of like if, you, if you're at, you know, competing at different venues, doesn't mean, you know, you guys don't talk, you know. You could be at one venue across the street from where I'm at and doesn't mean, you know. You know, we maybe commit each other after, you know what I mean? And talk shit to each other's face. But. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what, is, what is it like? What is it like to kind of be a... Uh... I don't want to say, I don't want to say rivals. Well, you guys aren't rivals. You guys are like fr- frenemies. Frenemies. Yeah, you're frenemies. Yeah. Frenemies? I can say that. Because fr- I've been to, I've been, we've all been at the same venue before. It's all, I know it's all love. I'll tell you that. I met Irony. I met Irony through Chisholm um, back at the vault. Damn. Oh. Damn. <laughs> Damn, it's all back. You ain't supposed to say that long, bro. <laughs> I thought you were going to say uh, back alley just to keep it a little bit more current. <laughs> That's the same time. That's the same That's time. Still, it's still a long time ago. Wow. <laughs> and I met, I, met, I met Santa Rosa recently. Um, but Santa Rosa's, like, when I, when I hit it off with, when I first met him, an easygoing guy, very humble, likes to crack jokes. He's a fucking ass. Same thing with Iron <laughs> Um <laughs> demo's always demo starting shit. Demo's trying to start shit. That's what that is. <laughs> <laughs> you know something that also we're at the station, bro. We always suck like shit. Always. <laughs> you know what is it? What is it? You know this year's been a a big. I don't want to get too political, but this year's been a big like, you know, brown pride type of year, black pride type of year, um, with everything going on in politics um do you think this year has been a important year not only for latin music but for i mean in my perspective you two are kind of two of the biggest latin djs i know and and santa rosa you know what you what you do i know what irony does i think you guys in this market and this team is two of the biggest djs so do you guys think like with the influence of bad bunny ozuna and all of them being more vocal do you guys think this is a great place for latin music to continue to uh, rise and go yeah, definitely. It um, has opened up, you know, um, the, not, I don't want to say the, you could say the, 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 the culture to the, to the rest of the world, or at least to the Anglo world, where, you know, we're not all webbags. I mean, you know, we do have flow, we do have a style, and we do have swag, you know, and everybody in, in Latin America is not Mexican. And, you know, everybody's different. They all have, a, you know, just like Americans, just like we all have their own swag. It's the same thing. It's like Puerto Ricans have their, their ways. Mexicans have their ways. Not me as a Salvi. I have my own way, even though I'm not really a Salvi. But, you know, you get what, you get what I'm saying. <laughs> what about Santa Rosa? What about you, brother? No, yeah, honestly, the same. I, I think the same same thing, you know, like it's been more having those, those plat- platforms with those artists. It t- totally gives us a different, you know, like, opportunities you know to expand and for people to see you know different things kind of basically what iron said nice dope do you guys um looking back at at reggaeton five ten years ago to where it is now 
do you think that was something that reggaeton was missing back then was sort of like those personalities that kind of stand out and stick to make it more of a forefront yes because it was part of it yeah but i think also I, um it's more open people are more a little bit more open now to like the music and and i think just like the how, how music evolved helped as well nice 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 latin grammys recently took place um was there anything on the on the show that people missed that you guys might have caught if you watched it or if you was any latin snubs or anything like that no i not not on my end not that i could comment on <laughs> that's a very <laughs> offline i'll tell you <laughs> okay okay you know. politically correct right there very pc yeah. right there <laughs> okay. We don't have any record reps listening to our podcast. So I mean, if I was to save your, your connects, you're good. Like, <laughs> nah, but it, I think it always happens. There's always those things that is like, it should have, it makes no sense to most people. And even me being in the industry, it still doesn't make sense, but you know, it's, it's still politics in there, you know? Oh, you, definitely. You see a lot of reggaeton artists collabing with like, you know, pop artists, hip hop artists. Let's let's start with Santa Rosa. Which one reggaeton artist do you like to collab with? Some with, you know, with another co collab like Pop, whatever it is. Which one would you like to see that you haven't seen yet? Oh man, that's a tough one because recently I've been seeing like really dope collabs. I think uh, something I would like is um, like uh, actually Maluma with Justin Bieber. I don't know why I feel like that would be a good collab. Like I was surprised with the weekend, and I, I like it. It's cool. But for like, I see something with Maluma and Beaver, like something like super dope. Yeah, I can see that. I can definitely see that. Like, like, each one has its 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 own uh, like vibe that brings that could bring something really good together. Dope. What about you, Arnie? The one I can't even say because they already did it. Alpha and uh, Tiger with uh, Gota. That shit was. Oh uh, yeah, I, I think it's fire. Yeah, he just goes hard. It's a fast tempo. It's an up tempo song, and it's a party song, literally. Is there is there any songs that you wish never made it to the scene? <laughs> like, is there just one song? It's like, fuck, I hate playing this fucking record. <laughs> There's tons of songs that we get like that. <laughs> <laughs> Especially on the replay. What's your top, two? What's your top two record? Like, what's your top two? I don't even know. That's how much I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> can't say. <laughs> what was that, Senator? I'm saying say, we can't say. Oh, man, you guys. You guys are just keeping it all bundled in today, huh? Because <laughs> <laughs> we're still playing them. <laughs> <laughs> they're current. They're current. They're current. I'm, st I'm still here at the office. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> You're like, bro. Got to keep it, keep it PG. I <laughs> uh, got to keep it put in politically correct here. And also, though, like, there's a lot of females also, like, evolving, too. Back then, honestly, all you overheard was fucking Evie Queen, right? That mm -hmm. was, to be honest. Now you hear, like, Becky G. Now you hear, like, all these other women. Do you think now, I guess, platform is going to expand more women than, you know, beat out the guys? So it's going to be the same or less? What do you guys think? I honestly think, I, I hope that there's more. Like, I'm rooting for Caso, I'm rooting for uh, Paloma Mami, I'm rooting for uh, Parina. Like, and yeah, those, those females are hot. Mm -hmm. and, you know, they got, they, got, they, got, they got bars too. Like, Farina, she could, yeah, she has her flow, and I like that. So I, I could only expect nothing but better stuff from them and from their camp. Right. Yeah, same here. I, I, think, uh, I think the one thing that helped this time around, like, the music wise, is that like the social media for example like i discovered like jen morrell through her flows that she has on on that she does like used to do weekly and i was like damn she's she's dope you know like she's she has really good flows the same thing with like paloma mommy like i feel like it's easier for for people now to hear like that talent compared to back then back then it was way more oriented on like you know labels basically and now it's like, you know, if you're dope and you have, you know, some sort of funding, you can start putting out content. Or even if you don't have funding, you can start putting your own content little by little. It's going to, if, it, if there's I'm talent, the it's going to pop out. Would you say it was more machismo back then than it is now? Is that the right word? Yeah, I, I, I think in a way, yeah. 
it was, it was were, again it goes back to you know people not being ready for it you know yeah i mean i feel it was more intimidating for a woman to come out back then um but i mean honestly Evie queen she opened the doors for one you woman you know but once they started coming out that's when they're that's how i think when it went down you know what i mean but now it's like damn you know we see different uh female artists coming left to right now so as I'm saying, it's going to expand more, and which one, which one are going to be good or not? You know what I mean? Yeah, because before, like they they used a lot of voices from like um, I think it was Jenny Lavos. Okay, I believe that's her name, and she used to do just like the Wisin and Dale kind of like you know poppy and this and that, you know, like just the words. But I feel like they didn't push her when she released her album. They didn't really you know make an effort to push it as much. And yeah, they never really gave her credit. She was so underrated. Right. But. With with stuff like that and the now, you still see the those uh, regotoneros that was like out back then and more come back and be more relevant now. Is there still a scene for for old old artists that was out back then to come in and kind of break through mainstream? Yeah, well, you look at Yuali Grande. Their last album was fire, fire, yeah, fire. I think that one was very rele relevant right now, you know? And I think that's what helped them. Cause yeah, there's like I feel like prior to that they've had they weren't as popular, but with that album, mm -hmm. like brought them back. Right now, with uh, I I heard uh, Alexis and Feet, no, not Alexis and Feet, Angeli Cris released an album last week, and there's a few songs that are very like Perreo, kind of like that uh, Jolie Randy. So I could see that they're you know trying to come back with like some relevant stuff. Cause that's what you have to do, you know. As an artist, you have to be able to you know, but, yeah. you were popular back then, but like the new audience doesn't know who you are to be honest, like they'll know one of your songs and that's about it. So you have to do music that they vibe to that from like music that is currently popping, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. Real quick before we wrap up, what um, what is your expectation of the future? What do you think the future is going to look like for the, the Latin scene? More collabs. A lot more collabs with, I could even see it uh, doing K-pop collabs now. Because K-pop is blowing up bts is, is stupid big so i don't I, I mean i can see that yeah for sure don't be surprised if i see that uh the, their new song with uh jay balvin on it yeah exactly my point yep because jay balvin has that that like that type of flow of like that k-pop you know like the colorful stuff mm -hmm. the, you know the happy faces the yeah. monitos and all that stuff you know arco iris all that going on yeah Okay. So yeah, I I think he would he would be like the best bet. I wouldn't doubt if it happens soon. <laughs> Real quick, um, Takashi Six Nine. He started doing a lot of fucking reggaeton in Latin feel shit. You know what I mean? Do you think he's gonna continue and will pop off or no? I doubt it. I'm sure he's gonna continue, but I don't know about him popping off. I think his run is done. It's <laughs> done. I mean, the record when it first came out, I was like, oh okay. Because but, the one with, with Anuel Doblea, I thought that was pretty catchy. I thought that was pretty cool. But that was before everything happened to him, you know what I mean? So now after he's trying to come back with some more stuff, I heard it. It's, it's not bad, but I don't think he's going to get the exposure, like, you know, because of all the madness he went through. Right, yeah. All right. Well, fellas, let's, uh, let's wrap this up, man. I appreciate you guys for taking the time out your day, your nights to uh... – to stop by and talk. Uh, Santa Rosa, let everyone know where they can find you at. Uh, they can find me at all my social media. It's at DJ Santa Rosa, spelled like this. <laughs> Love the branding. That's, that's great. Branding. There it is. <laughs> For sure.